Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is Chris Swope. He's going to tell a story about building a guitar for Jimmy Page. I work at Gibson Custom Shop, right? 2002 to 2008. And I came from this boutique world of Sadowski, where, you know, God is in the details. Nothing leaves its bench until it's perfect. And my gig there, I was at, uh, in the pro shop initially. And after a few years, I moved into the engineering department as their guy on the floor. I would build out prototypes and, you know, walk special guitars through production or whatever. But then I did an awful lot. I still did stuff for the pro shop. And I did a lot of things that just were not production friendly or things that nobody knew how to do. And so I, I was sort of my own dude there. I was never beholden to a number, which is great. So one day, and this is 2006, uh, this guy, Steve Christmas, comes to my bench and he's like, Chris, we're building this guitar for Jimmy Page, but we don't have the inlays for the fingerboard and their, their mother of pearl, you know, their shell. Can you cut them out? I'm like, well, yeah, man. And he shows me the spec sheet and I'm looking at the spec sheet and I'm like, we're going to have several problems here, you know, because this, what he wanted was an ES 350 T like Chuck Berry played. And I had built guitars for Jimmy, right? I had signature models or whatever. And I built a Zoso guitar that he played. Uh, Well, that was, I did that. I don't know what that was even about. One he played at the New York stock exchange, just something, you know, to ring the bell or whatever. But but this was different. This he always wanted a Chuck Berry guitar, I'm told. And so it's a short scale hollow body. If you think of the blonde hollow body when Chuck is first there in black and white film, I think he's got a white suit, he's doing the duck walk. Okay, it's a it's a short scale guitar with P90s, which for those who don't know, are a, a single coil, they're low profile, they're mounted on the top of the guitar. Well, the 350 that we were building in the custom shop was long scale with humbuckers, right? And they had accounted for that and it was a short scale neck, but there was a lot that was still wrong. You know, the fret wire was this horrible fret wire that Gibson USA was using. That was the first thing. It's like, you can't use that. You have to use that low profile 50s wire. The guy has a 59 Les Paul. He doesn't, he's not going to get the vibe of a vintage guitar. Okay, I'll talk to so-and-so. See. And then look, and it's like, we don't, you know, the neck fits here now. We don't have a pick guard template for this. We don't have, we don't do the right, right bevel for a vintage one. That's going to need to be done by hand, you know, and the, we're going to have problems with the pickup height because the neck's sitting higher off the body or whatever. And so I basically hijacked it and uh, with permission. I didn't build the guitar. You know, the guys, no one at a company like that builds an entire guitar. The guys who work in the carved top department build the box. The guys who take the mach- work on the necks, I mean, the machine roughs them out and the fingerboard line takes, you know, whatever. But at the end of the day, that God is in the details thing. After I walked it through, that's all me. And, uh, you know, so I spent a lot of time, you know, building up shims uh, for the the pickups, making the neck pickup shim the same size as the body and same material as the body and same color as the body. So it didn't look like, so it still looked like Chuck Berry's guitar, even though it needed a riser. You know, it was before the Pleck machine, if you know what the Pleck machine is. And, and you know, at Sadowski, we prided ourselves on fretwork. It's the most important thing. And so I did all that stuff for, you know, a lot of, a lot of the guitars. And so, I, you know, I was allowed to dial that guitar in. I had a couple of weeks to really just, it was by my bench. And when I had time, I could work on it. And it wasn't, it was like Sadowski. It was not going to leave my bench until it was perfect which was only possible because it was a gift. If it was uh, a sale, it would have been a number. And somebody would have been over like, man, we haven't hit our number this week, month, whatever. Come on, get this off our, your bench. You fall in love with it? You working it or jerking it? You know, those are the types of things that were 
or sin. So finally, I'm done with it. It's like, this is as good as it can be, given all of us collectively. This is as good as it can be. Got serial, lo- serial number written down in a log. It got put in a rack. Week goes by, it's still in a rack. You know, another week I walk back by, we're in a different rack with some other guitars. You know, seasons have changed. I don't know how long it was, but it was a long time and stuff happens. You know, wood settles in just to the truss rod, wood expands and contracts, bridges raise and lower as a result on a hollow body. You know, there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong and one day it's gone. Okay, you know. And I forgot about it. And, you know, a couple of weeks later, uh, this guy, Pat Foley, who was the artist relations guy, he comes over to the pro shop and he looks pissed off. And he's a nice guy. And he just he does this, you know. And all the guys come around him. He's like, okay, which one of you jokers built the guitar for Jimmy Page? And my friend John just kind of, looks at me and yeah, I'm like, it's me. Well, I just got off the phone with Jimmy and he loves it. He's, he's so excited about it. He's, he's, it's really, you nailed it. Great job. He's, he's been looking for this Chuck Berry thing forever. He's, he's had Perry Margulies, who is this sort of, I forget what all Perry does, but he's sort of a guitar guy. And he scouts out finished guitars for, for rock stars, or it did at the time. Um, you know, he's been looking, he just has never found one. That, that, and he's just, it's, he's just really digging it. He's super, great job. Cool, that's pretty cool. Because the Beatles kid that I was, Lennon got killed, I quit listening to the Beatles. I gave him like a 10, 15 year break. It was just too sad. I was in eighth grade, you know, it was like the first... And I turned to Led Zeppelin and Jimmy Page right when I started playing guitar. So this was pretty cool. Another week goes by and Foley's over my shoulder and he's, I just got off the phone with Jimmy. He cannot stop talking about this guitar. It's just, it's inspired him. He's, he's just over, over the moon with it. Great, man, that's great. I don't know how much time goes by. But it's the same words, you know, like, I just got off the phone with Jimmy. He's put a combo together. They're starting to rehearse. He hasn't played with anybody in years or in X amount of time. I don't know. In a long time. He hasn't hardly wanted to touch the guitar. He's so thrilled with his guitar. It's inspiring, you know, whatever. A couple more days, a week. I don't know. He comes out. He's on the phone. Yeah, he's right here. And he hands me the phone. It's like, Jimmy, he's right here. And I'm like, yeah, hello? You know, so, and it was, oh, it's Jimmy Page. I just wanted to tell you what a great guitar this is. I love it. It's fantastic. I showed it to my luthier. He thinks it's great. I've been playing it all the time. It's really inspiring. You've done a great job. You know, and I know I said some words, but I... I really don't know what they are. You know, I don't get starstruck, but I was just like, and, you know, I think, I think guys of that caliber or some of those guys are so used to talking to people who are just gobsmacked that they have this really graceful way of just keeping it going, asking them questions. And, you know, even if it's, you know what I mean, Chris, you know, or whatever, but it was just, it was the coolest thing. It wasn't like super long, but it was maybe three or four minutes of me talking to Jimmy Page. And I just remember him saying, I called Perry Margulies. I, I told him, stop looking. I found my Chuck Berry guitar. <laughs> that was cool. Well, and that was 2006. And you know what came after 2006? 2007. Okay. <laughs> Led Zeppelin gets back together. For a big reunion show. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. And he played that guitar. It, it actually substituted the, the I for, what are the songs he would use the Dan Electro and play, of all things, play, play slide on and stuff, like whatever. It was cool. 